Hello everyone, and welcome to the ultrasonic video for microbits. In this video, we're going to need several different components. First, we're going to need the microbit over here. We're going to need this daughter board, our USB cable. We're going to need the sonar. It will come in a red bag like this. We will need two female to female breadboard connectors, and four male to female breadboard connectors. We have a 1K resistor and a 2K resistor. So what I've got going here is a quick demo of what we're going to be doing today. Here you have our ultrasonic sensor. It basically just senses how far away something is. And the code that I've got in here right now will tell you uh, we'll read that distance up. So it has a smiley face and then it shows, hey, that's one centimeter away. And if I hold my hand a little bit further away, it'll say, hey, that's 23 centimeters away. The ultrasonic sensor actually requires five volts of power in order to work. So because of that, we have to be super careful with how we wire this all together. The main micro bit can only handle three volts of power. So when we take in five volts of power, we're gonna have to wire using resistors in order to get it down to three volts of power for output. That's why we're using this. This is called a breadboard. These rows are connected with copper plates beneath the little holes. So each row is connected electrically and for the right and left portion, you can see where it has the positive and the negative. Those columns are one long copper strip. So those are connected along the column electrically. So this is the 2K resistor. For the 2K resistor, this first band will be red. And for the 1K resistor, the first band will be brown. So now I'm going to give you a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to connect your sonar to your daughter board. So let's get the simple stuff out of the way for first. So first we know that the power has to go to five volts. If you look at the daughter board over here, we can see that five volts is right up here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna Use our female to female connector, go right to the five volts and go to VCC up here. Next, we have our input. Our input can also uh, just take whatever the board will throw at it, which is our trigger, right? So we take our trig and I'm going to connect this to pin zero. Right, so move this a little bit out of the way. We're gonna need two signal pins. Right, we're gonna be using zero and one. Zero is gonna be what we'll have our trigger connected to. Next, I wanna get our ground all connected. We're gonna have multiple things connecting to the ground. So we're gonna need multiple connections. And to solve that, I am going to connect our breadboard to ground. So over here on the far left, we have some ground pins right here. And I'm gonna take this, connect it right there. And I'm gonna take our breadboard and plug it into the bottom here on the negative, right down there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this other one and connect it to ground here so now it's connected to ground. And then I can plug it anywhere on this far right column over here. I could plug it in all the way up here, or I could plug it in down here. I'm gonna plug it in down here for now. Okay. Now the last thing we need to do is configure our output, that echo right, right there. And we need to put it through a couple resistors in order to get the voltage down so that it won't fry our micro bit. In order to do that, 
I am going to first connect this yellow wire to Echo. And then I'm just going to take this yellow wire and plug it into our breadboard. The specific row is not important, but we are going to want to connect other things to it. So I'm going to plug it into row five here. See, that says row five. And then what I'm going to do is take my resistors. I'm going to inspect this one nice and close. We can see that that one has a brown first one. So I know this one is my 1K resistor. And I'll plug this in down here. And I want to have it plugged into the same row as my Echo. And then plug it into another row down here. Like that. So Echo is plugged into row five up here, and the resistor is plugged into row five, but it's also plugged into row 11 right here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take our 2K resistor, and I can confirm that this is a 2K resistor by looking right there and seeing that that band is red. I'm then going to take this resistor and plug it in over here on the same row as my previous resistor, so that's row 11. And then I'm gonna plug it anywhere on this negative column. I'll plug it in up here. That seems nice. So you can see now my 2K resistor is plugged into row 11, and it's also plugged into this negative column. Great. Now we have one more thing. Now we have to hook up our output to actually read back into the board. All we need to do that is one more male to female breadboard connector over here. I'm using my red one. And we're just gonna put this in the same row as both of these resistors and then connect it to pin one up here. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Put it right here. And then plug it in up here to pin one. Great. So that's all plugged in. Now, just because I don't want to break anything, and you guys should also do this as well, I'm gonna follow each of my cables and see where it goes and make sure that I'm doing it right. So this purple one is power. It's going directly to power. I can see that there. This white one is the trigger. It should be going directly to the zero pin, which you can see there. This third one is our echo. It's our output. And because we can't output five volts, we're gonna need to split it. So this echo goes all the way to the breadboard where it is connected to the 1K resistor. And that 1K resistor feeds into both the output and the ground. The way I like to think about this is Imagine you're making a sandcastle on the beach. Now your sandcastle is going to constantly keep getting berated by waves unless you divert some of that extra energy down another path. That's what we're doing here. I'm diverting some of the voltage that would be going through our micro bit into the ground. So that way it won't damage anything. And we can see that does in fact be back here. And we can confirm our ground is set up properly. Ground goes to brown. Brown goes here. Ground goes down here through to the ground on the board. So everything should be good. I already have a little code up and running on here. So I'm just going to plug everything in. And we'll see if it works. We've got our smiley face going. 
it's got a higher 11 centimeters sounds about right um for the next cycle it should see that my hand is right there so it's only going to say two centimeters that's great let's hop inside of the microbit app and take a look at the code that i've written for here we first need to add the sonar extension so go down to extensions and then search for sonar it should be the first one to pop up Now we're ready to start coding. First we need to create a new variable for distance. And then we can set the distance to be whatever the sonar reads as its input. Here you can see I am putting in that input. Make sure to choose the correct pins for trigger and echo and the correct unit. And then we're good to play around with it. You can put this in all sorts of different code blocks. I'm going to let the rest of my code just run, uh, but you can play around with whatever you want. You can have if statements. You can have it just show the same thing over and over. Get creative. 